President Biden says voters used the congressional midterm elections on Tuesday to speak clearly about their concerns, ranging from inflation and the cost of living to public safety, democracy and abortion rights. He also suggested he would run for a second term in 2024. Results are yet to be declared for several contests, but the Republican Party remains on track to take control of the House of Representatives. Our Washington correspondent Nomia Iqbal reports. America woke up to its latest reality. It still doesn't know who won the midterm elections. Hey, buddy, Joe Biden, congratulations, man. Congratulations. President Biden looked relieved. The so-called red wave didn't happen. It had been predicted the Republicans would dominate. He rang up winning Democrats to say congratulations. Congratulations. I'm so excited for you. Good Back in a suit and tie, President Biden addressed the media. And uh, it was a good day, I think, for democracy. And I think it was a good day for America. Pennsylvania gave him his biggest win. The hoodie-wearing stroke survivor John Fesserman beat the TV celebrity Dr. Mehmet Oz. He was backed by Donald Trump. Many of Mr. Trump's other candidates lost, suggesting his power over the party may be diminishing and strengthening in the hands of another Republican, rising conservative star Ron DeSantis, who secured the governor race in Florida. The people have delivered their verdict. Freedom is here to stay. The race for the Senate has come down to three states, including the state of Georgia. We won't know the result of that until December. But Republicans look set to take the House, which could impact President Biden's ability to get laws passed. And let me say this. Regardless, regardless of what the final tally in these elections show, and there's still some counting going on, I'm prepared to work with my Republican colleagues. But will the Republicans work with him? It's likely that Mr. Biden will run for the White House again, but it's very unlikely that his opponents will help make the rest of his term successful as they focus on winning the presidency in 2024. Nomi Rickbell, BBC News, Washington. Well, let's go live to Washington now and talk to Skylar Henry from CBS News. Skylar, hello to you. Uh, first of all, how close is the race for the Senate? Is it going to depend on what happens in Georgia? Well, hey there, good to see you. It very well could, especially given the fact that we still don't know the total results out of Nevada and Arizona just yet. CBS News projected yesterday another victory for Republicans in the state of Wisconsin, but we're still waiting to see exactly how things will shake up in those two other Senate races, because if Republicans are able to flip at least one of those races there, then, of course, all eyes will then be on Georgia. We heard it in the piece, but then that race will go to a runoff, which is set for December 6th. One of those candidates needs to earn more than 50% of the vote to be declared a winner there. Uh, and so that could be several weeks before we really understand which party is in control here on Capitol Hill. But if both of those seats, the Nevada seat and the Arizona seat, go to Democrats, then all eyes will be on Georgia for a completely different reason. Because if the incumbent in Georgia were to win, which is a Democrat, then Democrats would be in control uh, of the Senate as well, uh, keeping on with what we saw for the past two years for the president. Skylar, uh, just talking about some of the media coverage of what's happened in the midterms, I just wanted to show our viewers one particular front page of a newspaper, the cover of The New Yorker. Yeah. I think we can have a look at it now. This is a paper that used to support Donald Trump. Look at it now. It's calling him mm -hmm. a vote repellent. It says it's up to the GOP to fix this. It's uh, quite a turnaround. How do you think possibly these results might affect Donald Trump's next move? Well, that'll be interesting to see, especially given the fact that the former president alluded that he had a major announcement next week, for starters. Many in the president's inner circle thought that that could be him announcing that he was jumping into the 2024 presidential race. But after seeing uh, the results that we saw after the midterms, where not nearly as many Republicans saw victories as was expected, especially uh, in uh, the House and the Senate, let alone gubernatorial races and secretary of state races across the country, I think many within the party are wondering what 
is the direction for the GOP and if it is having a bit of an identity crisis, if you will. Remember, there are still very much those MAGA Republicans uh, who sort of follow the former president, his rhetoric, his messaging, even his tone on not only issues, but just his sort of uh, demeanor. But then there's also that uh, moderate conservative group as well that's out there that doesn't necessarily like what the former president has to say, more traditional Republicans, if you will, think former Vice President Mike Pence or Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell for a few examples of that. So I think it'll be interesting to see exactly how this all goes. And then, of course, which was also mentioned in the piece, the rising star that is Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. We've heard the former president take jabs at him in the past, ironic given the fact that they are uh, neighbors, if you will, both being in Florida. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see exactly how that shakes out, especially if the former president decides to jump in the race, if Governor DeSantis decides to jump in the race, what that would look like in terms of a Republican primary. Skyler, one a wider question for you, uh, last of all. What do you think we can sure. tell about Americans and the issues they, they care most about right now from these results? Right. Well, I think the biggest issue right now is inflation and the state of the economy. I think voters across the board certainly said that they were concerned about that, regardless of if they were Republican or Democrat or other. Uh, they said that they were feeling the pain at the pump paying at the grocery store, the costs from everything to bread to, you know, other things for their kids was simply just going up. And that was something that they wanted their candidates and representatives to address. After that, a lot of other issues, the state of immigration, abortion rights, uh, the state of crime, if you will. And if you zoom out a little bit, there were many concerns about the state of democracy, which is why President Biden was asked about that. He has said that the midterm results was a good day for democracy, especially given the fact of what we've seen over the last few uh, weeks and months, especially in this election season, with so many people denying the 2020 presidential race results, uh, denying these uh, vote count in so many of these races, the former are President Biden confident about that, and it would appear as if voters are as well. Skyler, thank you very much, Skyler Henry. There on Capitol Hill from CBS News. Thank you.